Hey everyone, welcome to Liftoff, the channel where we provide SpaceX news and updates and also update you on important developments in the space race. In this episode, we have updates about the SpaceX launches and the bad side of the space race. Please subscribe to our channel. If you enjoy your time with us, please like us and share. A new client Korea Aerospace Industries has decided to launch a next-generation mid-size satellite in cooperation with SpaceX. It will launch the satellite early next year, at the earliest. SpaceX is a private space developer founded in 2002 by Elon Musk, who founded Tesla, a US electric vehicle company. SpaceX succeeded in launching a manned spacecraft for the first time as a private company in 2020. Kai announced on July 18th that it has signed a contract with SpaceX to launch mid-size satellite number 4. Beside the launch vehicle contract, the two companies are also considering strategic cooperation. The Korean government is promoting the development and launch of five 500kg medium-sized satellites with Korea's own technology. The Korea Aerospace Research Institute is implementing the project, with Kai taking part as a co-developer. The launch of the first next-generation mid-sized satellite was led by Kerry. But starting from the second satellite, Kai will orchestrate the entire process. Following its launch of the second satellite in early next year, Kai will develop and launch a third satellite for space science and technology verification. The fourth satellite for wide area articular observation and a fifth satellite water resource observation through C-band imaging radar by 2025. The ugly face of space race. Last week, Virgin Galactic took Richard Branson past the edge of the space, roughly 86 kilometers up, part of a new space race with the Amazon billionaire Jeff Bezos. Both very wealthy businessmen hope to vastly expand the number of people in space. We're here to make space more accessible to all, said Branson, shortly after his flight. Welcome to the dawn of the new space age. Already people are buying tickets to space. Companies including SpaceX, Virgin Galactics, and space adventure want to make space tourism more common. The Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa spent an undisclosed sum of money with a SpaceX in 2018 for a possible future private trip around the moon and back. And this June, an anonymous space lover paid 28 million to fly on Blue Origin's New Shepard with Jeff Bezos, though later back out due to a scheduling conflict. But this launch of a new private space industry that is cultivating tourism and popular use could come vast environmental cost, says Eloise Marias, an associate professor of physical geography at University College London. Maria studies the impact of fuels and industries on the atmosphere. When rockets launch into space, they require a huge amount of propellant to make it out of the Earth's atmosphere. For SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, it is kerosene, and for NASA, it's liquid hydrogen in their new space launch system. Those fuels emit a variety of substance into atmosphere, including carbon dioxide, water, chlorine, and other chemicals. The carbon emissions from rockets are small compared with the aircraft industry, she says, but they are increasing at nearly 5.6% a year and Maria has been running simulation for a decade to figure out at what point will they compete with traditional source we are familiar with. For one long-haul plane flight, it's one to three tons of carbon dioxide, say Maria's. For one rocket launch, it's 200 to 300 tons of carbon dioxide, two orders of magnitude more, so it doesn't need to grow that much more to compete with other sources. Right now, the number of rocket flights is very small. In the whole of the 2020, for instance, there were 114 attempts orbital launches in the world, according to NASA. That compares with the airline industry more than 100,000 flights each day on average. But emission from rockets are emitted right into the upper atmosphere, which means they stay there for a long time, two to three years. Even water injected into the upper atmosphere where it can form clouds, can have warming impact, say Maria's. Even something as seemingly innocuous as water can have an impact. Closer to the ground, 
All fuel emits huge amount of heat, which can add ozone to the atmosphere, where it acts like a greenhouse gas and retains heat. In addition to carbon dioxide, fuels like kerosene and methane also produce soot. While there are a number of environmental impacts resulting from the launch of the space vehicles, the depletion of stratospheric ozone is most studied and most immediately concerning, wrote Jessica Dallas, a senior policy advisor at a New Zealand space agency, in an analysis of research on space launch emission published last year. Another report from 2019, penned by the Center of the Space Policy and Strategy linked the space emission problem to that of the space debris, which outer says creates an existential risk to the industry. Today, launch vehicle emission presents a distinctive echo of the space debris problem. Rocket engine exhaust emitted into the stratosphere during ascent to orbit adversely impact the global atmosphere, they wrote. We just don't know how large the space tourism industry could become, say Marius. A new market report estimates that the global suborbital transportation and space tourism make it estimate to reach 2.58 billion in 2031, growing 17.15% each year of the next decade. The major driving factor for the market's robustness will be focused efforts to enable space transportation, emerging startups in suborbital transportation, and increasing developments in low-cost launching sites, the reporter says. In the past, most space transportation has been focused on cargo supply missions to the International Space Station and satellite launch services, but currently this focus has shifted to in-space transportation, planetary explorations, crew missions, suborbital transportation and space tourism. Several companies including SpaceX, Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic have been focusing on developing platforms such as rocket-powered suborbital vehicles that will enable the industry to carry out suborbital transportation and space tourism. People have pointed out that the money these billionaires have poured into space technology could be invested in making life better on our planet, where wildfires, heat waves and other climate disasters are becoming more frequent as the globe warms up in the climate crisis. Is anyone else alarmed that the billionaires are having their own private space race while record-breaking heatwaves are sparking a fire-breathing dragon of clouds and cooking sea creatures to death in their shells? The former U.S. Labor Secretary Robert Reich tweeted last week. Mariah says that there is always an element of excitement to new developments in space, but it's still possible to be responsible while doing something exciting. She urges caution as the space tourism industry grows and says there are currently no international rules around the kinds of fuels used and their impact on the environment. We have no regulations currently around rocket emissions, she says. The time to act is now, while the billionaires are still buying their tickets. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. Please like us and hit the subscribe button so we can notify you when the next episode is available. Until next time, it's bye for now from all of us at Liftoff.